Yo, before we get into the actual video, let me put this down real quick. Before we get into the actual video, in case you didn't know, my newsletter, Navigating Security, is giving away free stuff, right? I've talked to the guys over at Pong Labs and they've agreed to give away three yearly subscriptions, which means you get access to the multi-cloud cyber ranges they release every quarter. I will also be giving away HTB Academy gift cards, HTB Academy, I mean, the HTB Lab gift cards, right? And then some TCM courses, access, passes. So, subscribe to the newsletter, subscribe to the channel, and go follow Pwn Labs on LinkedIn. I'll put more details in the description and on screen. This is not a random giveaway. You have to be doing something. Prove it to me that you're doing something. Winners will be announced at 10K. People of the internet, with all the free training available online, have you ever stopped and wondered who makes this training? All the hack the box machines, all the try hack me rooms, all the guided pwn labs instances, right? That sort of stuff. I've always found it fascinating that someone can sit down and design a lab instance or a box to teach you a specific skill without actually outright giving you notes on that specific topic. That's how CTFs work, right? You have to bump around and find the solution. It's something I would like to eventually start doing as well, making CTF scenarios to help people learn certain aspects of offensive cybersecurity. So to get the ball rolling for all of us who might be interested in this sort of thing, I enlisted the help of a friend who knows everything there is to know about making CTF machines and building at scale. In this video, I have a chat with Ian Austin, former director of innovation at Hack the Box and now the founder and CEO of Pwn Labs, an online training platform mostly focused on helping you get hands-on training with cloud security. If you have any questions at the end of this, put them in the comments and I'll ask Ian to answer them in a LinkedIn post or something of that sort. I hope you enjoy the chat. Yeah. So Ian, um, speed round questions. Um, okay. One minute or less or just a yes or no. Okay. Certifications, bug bounty, CTFs. If you had to pick one path for someone to start in, what would it be? Uh, good question. I would go for certifications just because um, if you're a beginner, then yeah. you kind of need something to, you know, certifications really help. Um, but yeah, if I had to choose one, I'd probably say certifications, but my heart tells me CTFs. CTFs, okay. Um, one skill that helped you progress in your career? Um, sysadmin, being able to build stuff. Building, okay. That's something we can talk about later because I was going to ask. Should you learn to code, yes or no? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Even if it's just scripting. It, you don't have to be a low-level C or assembly programmer, although there's a lot of fun to be had there. But yeah. just scripting stuff, I mean, if anything, even if you're not making applications, you're going to make your life a lot easier. Okay, that's cool. College, yay or nay? Um, college being university, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, um... Nay. Nay. <laughs> Although I did, I did go, but yeah. I kind of did it um, like part-time over a few years, but no. Okay, we can get into that a bit more, but um, Ian, <laughs> welcome to the channel. Thank you for being here. Um, Thank you. What is your story? Where are you from? How did you get started in security? If you want to uh, a brief overview. Yeah, my story. So I guess um, starting right at the beginning in that case, uh, then I'm, I'm from Sweden. Uh, mm -hmm. I can speak Swedish. Um, my first language was Swedish. I came over to the UK when I was really young. Um, and so that's kind of why I sound the way I do. Um, but yeah, I, I got into IT pretty, pretty early after, after school. I, I had no clue what I wanted to do and took like a little gap year um, after, yeah. after high school. Um, started um, as a sysadmin um, and then kind of took an open university degree um, like part time over seven years, which I got like my my undergrad through through that in, in like IT and psychology. So I'm really interested in, in psychology as, as well. Um, and then kind of, I think f for the best part of maybe 10 years, I was a sysadmin. Yeah. Uh, loved that. And then just moved into security, really, um, through like becoming a security administrator, looking after the security tools and then kind of gradually 
improving my knowledge in security as well and um, uh, becoming a penetration tester and security engineer. So I was, I was kind of, um, when I was still a practitioner, mm-hmm. um, then, you know, I was, I was purple team, which I guess has influenced how, how Pwn Labs is kind of uh, purple yeah. and stuff now. So, yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's kind of, cool. that's kind of me in a nutshell, I guess. So it was like sysadmin and then administrator penetration tester? Exactly, mate. Yeah. Okay. How do you find that sort of work? Uh, just being like in the uh, technical bits. I miss it, honestly. Um, I love being a content creator and someone who kind of helps others to learn. But uh, I loved being a practitioner as a sysadmin, um, as a penetration tester, as a defender. Uh, when Hack the Box came along and they were like, hey, we, we, we'd like you to join us. Uh, it was... A, in some ways, it was a very hard decision because I loved what I was doing as a practitioner. But then, um, yeah, I don't regret it. I think I made some friends at Hack the Box. I really enjoyed the experience. And uh, uh, would I like to be a practitioner again in the future? Uh, probably. <laughs> but probably. We'll, see, we'll see where that goes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, that's one thing I did want to ask about. How did you get into Hack the Box? Because obviously, um, you obviously built stuff for them. Um, how, yeah. how how did that work out? Well, I I was just kind of like a in in like a purple team focused role and kind of interested in hacking, at, hacking at night to kind of like um, supplement my skills. I, I was just like really deep in the rabbit hole of security and learning as much as I could. I, I came across various sites like um, Hack Hack the Box, and that was like that actually launched you know uh, before some of some of the others. Mm-hmm. So I kind of did that and. I think I pwned like one or two machines and then I, I didn't really do much for a year. And then in like 2018, I, I started to take it a bit more seriously. Um, and at the same time, I realized that with the experience I had as, as like a, an IT support and sysadmin, um, there's a hell of a lot of mistakes that I made uh, that I, I realized I could probably like show and share with the community, like some some of the stuff that happens in real life. Had the books yeah. at the time had some... Had like it had a bunch of realistic machines, but it also had quite a bunch of fairly CTFE ones, I want to say. And so I kind of feel like I, yeah, I wanted to build some stuff for them. Uh, so yeah, that's how my journey with them started. I, I started making machines, uh, doing the write ups, um, I became a mod, a mod and, and started like helping out in the community, and uh, and then. Yeah, I actually joined uh, joined full time when Harris and, and James Narris decided they they wanted to move away from like a, a purely community focused thing, a community run thing, and and start a business from it. So yeah, it was, it was exciting. Like I learned a hell of a lot there. In um, you know, about oh, it was initially, about, it was yeah. initially like community run purely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it was really um, Harris. James, Aris, and, and just like a bunch of community volunteers, including me. I, I was, um, you know, we were just mods, uh, creating content and engaging with the community and stuff like that. But um, yeah, and then, and then it just kind of turned into this beast that hacked the box now is. <laughs> yep. yep, that's pretty uh, interesting. So at that point, how many boxes or machines do you think you had built? Well, me? Yeah. Mm, at that point, probably like um, maybe two or three. No, like at that point, maybe like seven or eight. And then when I joined Hack the Box, I kind of did like another 10 machines or, or something there. So I've made, I think, uh, 20 machines in total for Hack the Box. Um, and yeah, what, what I really loved about my time in Hack the Box was speaking yeah. with the community and like... Um, and kind of like a lot of the people from the community were people that I ended up hiring uh, in in the team and, and stuff like that. So that was great. And so actually, that's kind of what I'd lo- I've, I've loved about uh, Pwn Labs is that I'm kind of, you know, re-engaging a lot with the community. We've got, you know, a growing community. It's it's obviously a lot smaller than Try Hack Me and Hack the Box. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm, I'm loving having that community and interacting with it. Okay. Um... Some of your wording there was kind of like um, you wanted to make realistic machines. 
compared yeah. to CTFE machines. Yeah. So you do draw a, dist- a distinction between certain CTFs and um, realistic, you know, scenarios. Is that it? Yeah, I'd say so, Taddy. I mean, like, um, there's a lot of like, there's a lot of learning to be had. What, whether it's CTF or, or realistic, um, but my personal opinion is is that if you're going to learn something it's probably better if if you you know if you can use what you've applied somewhere else if it's like if it's just a hobby for you if if cybersecurity is just a hobby and yep. and that's all then you know amazing but if you actually kind of want to do almost like hack your brain into learning stuff that you can apply then in real in the real world then it's probably better to do real real world scenarios okay that's cool well um can you take us through how it actually is to build a box um Uh, what's like the life cycle do you map everything out first or do you just start building i'd love to be that organized uh i'll be honest with you i'm (laughs) i'm organization is is not something that um you know i'm super good at yeah um for me i love researching and i love learning new stuff and so um, like some, some of the machines have legit just been, um, s- actual mistakes I've made or kind of stuff. But even, even then I like to kind of introduce some new element that at least I learned something as part of, as part of building. Um, and so, yeah, I would just learn, maybe research a couple of things and see yeah. what fits together. Have a, have a scenario generally in my mind and kind of just iterate and refine so i yeah i'd say instead of having this kind of blueprint from the beginning sometimes what i started with is very different to how it kind of ended up i think and it's kind of just like a process of iteration even like with with hack the box and and pwn labs Mm -hmm. like we're kind of always iterating it's just um yeah so i'd probably say just uh, do some fun research um uh, put something together and and improve on it and you know uh, you may create something really fun yeah that's pretty cool um so as early career right would would you say this is something someone could a career path someone could start out with because obviously you were sysadmin for a long time you yeah. had mistakes that you made and you knew how to build definitely so do you think that building or having some sort of experience somewhere else would be a prerequisite to you know, get into this career path. I think right now it's called content engineering, if I'm not mistaken. Content engineering, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. I mean, I think it's incre- it's almost like increasingly this career path that you can go down. It like I've hired um, a few, you know, some some really amazing people uh, while I was in Hack the Box and and now with Pwn Labs as well. And some of those people, you know, they weren't already security practitioners or administrators. They they yep. they pretty much came out of university. So I'd say it, it's definitely a really rewarding career. Um, it's something that you can do a lot of research and it's, it's pretty fun to share knowledge with the community. Um, you don't have to be an admin already or a security uh, person, but if you are, obviously it's, it's going to make things a little bit easier in a way because you have this almost like, um, almost like a body of knowledge to kind of uh, pull from, I yeah. guess. But yeah, it's, uh, you don't have to like, um, and being a content creator uh, generally nowadays, like it's maybe different to like 15, 15 years ago, like when, when we're kind of like sysadmins, I think a lot of people now they have their job and, and then also on the side, they kind of want to do this, um, you know, build their brand and do content creation, which is, which mm-hmm. is amazing. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, creativity, I don't think I'm the most creative person, honestly, um okay. how, how is that for you obviously if you're going to be building a lot of different scenarios um you kind of need to mix it up a bit do you yeah. think that's one thing that you know you should bring to the table or do you just go based on like the scenario you might you might have in hand mm, good question good question i think some people are generally more creative than others and some people are maybe better at implementing and creating than others Yep. Um, um, it definitely helps like if you're purely if you're purely into kind of 
uh, creativity. Like some some people are really good at starting stuff, but like struggle mm -hmm. to finish. And some people are really yeah. good at ideas, but struggle with the implementation. Um, it definitely helps if you can put together the like the the technical aspects and the research along with creativity. Um, this is where I think maybe experience does make a difference because you can kind of create you know scenarios and you can be creative in a way that's kind of um more realistic maybe um yeah rather than just putting uh, together like something that's fairly contrived but you know um uh yeah, I mean, I think we all struggle with creativity uh, sometimes. I wouldn't uh, put yourself down about being creative. You probably are. Uh, you probably are creative in in many other ways. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, circling back to actually building uh, a machine, uh, you said you pull from, you know, your previous experience. Um, yeah. How about now? You were a sysadmin back then, but cloud wasn't always, you know, the thing. It's only recently exactly. come into practice. So where do you pull like the inspiration, sort of say, for some of the scenarios you build with Pwn Labs? Yeah, great question. Because when I was a sysadmin, the cloud was was about, but it wasn't it hadn't seen like the adoption that we've seen now, right? And yep. I guess a lot of the sysadmins now are DevOps engineers or, or cloud mm -hmm. engineers and, and so um for me I do a lot of reading in terms of like um how how people have set things up and you know some some of the security issues that we've had in the cloud like there's some websites like hacking.cloud um i think i've got that right let me just check hacking, hacking the dot cloud i yeah, think that's what it is hacking yeah. the dot cloud um, yeah, yeah. that that website is is pretty amazing like i think what um what they've put together there is is just a really great resource for the community um if you've not got you know, I've not been super hands-on as a cloud engineer myself, but I've been through it as a, you know, I've been through traditional infrastructure as a security engineer and as a sysadmin. And so basically I've taken that knowledge and I've applied it to the cloud, even though I didn't have any like, you know, real cloud uh, practitioner experience myself. Um, so I feel like, I feel like, um, yeah, a lot of the I've set up a lot of infrastructure now, just yeah. by what I've done with Pwned Labs and like with some product in in Hack the Box and stuff like that. In terms of actual like uh, production systems in the cloud, uh, I haven't done that. And so you know, this comes back to the point: Do you need to be able to do that to show to showcase security scenarios? And I don't think so. I mean, will it help you? Without a doubt. Um, yeah. But I feel I feel like I can kind of do enough research and read blogs and kind of you know put together scenarios in in a realistic way. Okay. Um, in terms of choice of uh, frameworks, coding, scripting languages, what would those be for you? Uh, for me, Python, uh, PowerShell, uh, just kind of very you know sysadmin scripting languages basically. <laughs> uh, I'd I'd love to say that I was like into C or assembly and. You know, as a challenge, as a project, um, there's a lot of fun to be had there. But for me, I, f I feel kind of, um, I'd like to say I'm, I'm probably a little bit lazy. And, and so anything that can I can use to automate <laughs> my uh, my way out of having to do stuff, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was actually going to be one of my other questions, which would be right. automation versus actually just writing out your code. Um, We've had the conversation before, and you said yeah. that you do a lot of automations. There's things you don't have to do manually, obviously, uh, in any field. How much of that do you do? Is there any recommended platforms for like productivity in general or specifically to some of the things you do? I know yeah. John Hammond always talks about NN, N8N, which automates workflows, ETC. Is this an automation platform? Uh, you can automate oh, pipelines. Okay. Um, What's like it called? N eight N. N eight N. Yeah. I'll check it out. Um, yeah, I'll check it out. That looks looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, for me, when I, I think when you're first starting with anything, like, 
whether it's making virtual machines for Hack the Box or kind of, you know, uh, creating cloud scenarios, it always mm -hmm. helps to really um, maybe do it manually, I'd say, and understand, you know, at a basic level how, how, how things can link together, they can integrate, you understand the basic, you know, uh, uh, concept of everything that you're doing. And then once you understand that, uh, trying to automate that um, as best you can so that you don't have to keep on clicking with the mouse because that's just like, uh, yep. it's it's not fun, right? And and, and so, but then saying that, um, you know, the benefit of automation is that you don't have to do things repeatedly over and over again. When, you know, you don't have to click through uh, 20 times all the time. You can you can just run a script and, and, and kind of it does it for you. But then, you know, if you're learning something like Terraform, honestly, um, you no, know, you're going to have some pretty dark days where you're kind of like battling Terraform scripts, and and, and yeah. it's yeah. I've I've pulled some like six AMers where I've just been like, I wouldn't let myself uh, really finish and until I until I got like a Terraform script working, and it's it's fine. Like once once you kind of uh, get some good familiarity with it, it's it gets a lot easier. Like, uh, but I'd say the initial learning curve for Terraform is something that um, yeah, it's. I wouldn't necessarily call it fun, although it's kind of, yeah. you know, when you get the breakthrough and, and it starts working, then it's a great feeling. So, yeah, I I use Terraform. Um, automation frameworks like N8, uh, I'll, I'll have to look into, but I, I haven't used that much myself. Okay. Well, at scale, obviously, you started building with, like, individual machines for Hack the Box. You made a couple, you said maybe 20. But at scale, yep. now that you have started Pwn Labs, what does that look like if, uh, without giving, you know, too much secrets away, um, what does that look like at scale, having to build that much so quickly sometimes? Um, in, in terms of like, um, in terms of like how we do it or like what we're thinking or like what it means for me as, as like how much sleep I can get or like, <laughs> <laughs> like obviously say, as, as like. The early, a founder of like something early something still yeah. pretty young you probably won't get that much sleep but i think in yeah. terms of like the technical aspect um obviously you do accept community um scenarios yeah yeah. yeah yeah um how spruced up do those have to look like does it have to be like super complex super technical what's like a realistic goal one can set if they want to submit like um something to pwn labs um i i'd say even an, an idea is something that is, is fine. If you've got this amazing idea and yep. you don't necessarily know how to do it yourself, reach out to us. We can look to make it happen and maybe give you kind of joint credit on, on what gets created, right? Mm -hmm. um, in terms of scaling, like, we haven't launched CTFs yet. We've got guided labs and now we've got cyber ranges starting with uh, with Thunderdome. Yep. Um, so when when we have CTFs, as well like ctf challenges i think we'll be definitely opening up a lot more to community submissions then um and then yeah if people want to do it in, in cloud formation or, or whatever they feel comfortable with i think that's fine and then you know once we've got the infrastructure stood up in a development environment it's pretty easy to then also automate you know that and create uh, terraform f f for for the infrastructure that's already there. So I wouldn't say we'd, we'd need people to, you know, create this final, absolutely perfect uh, content, even, yeah. you know, just an idea and, and the cloud formation script uh, will we'll work with it. Okay, let's pivot a little bit and then talk about cloud security for just a quick bit. If sure. someone wanted to get into cloud security, would you recommend they, you know, take a look at all the different cloud providers, like the major ones, Azure, AWS, GCP, and learn each one or pick one, stick to that and like, you know, go deep with that? My feeling is honestly that even if you wanted to pick one cloud provider, at some point you're going to need to specialize within that cloud provider. Um, yeah. And so starting, you know, you it may be fun and, and you may want to kind of get experience on different uh, cloud scenarios, but I'd, I'd say no one really well, even if you kind of dabble in some of the others or, or get yourself to a, an okay level in all of them. Uh, it definitely 
will pay you to know one really well. And as you maybe, you know, maybe you start off as a generalist and at some point you kind of want to specialize, uh, even, yeah, even within AWS, say, say I chose AWS as, as the platform I want to focus on, e even mm -hmm. then I'd probably have to specialize within specific things yeah. within AWS as I, as I kind of progress through, through my career. Okay. Um, that's cool. Related to that, obviously now you could be, I'm not sure if you're hiring right now, but maybe at some point in the future, if yeah. you're specifically hiring for someone that will be creating scenarios and content for Pwn Labs, yeah. what would you be looking for in terms of like certifications or experience? Um, oh, that's a great question, Taddy. So, um, yeah. honestly, mate, um, I don't look for any certifications. I don't look for any experience. Um, what matters to me is if you've got like the mindset that you just love learning and you're curious and you're kind of part of the community and we've maybe collaborated together on some stuff. Like I kind of, I'd like to say I'm, I'm not like super, like I'm, I don't have any amazing skills really. Um, but if I did have some sort of like skill that was pretty, you know, good, it's probably just that I see a lot of potential in people and I like to kind of yeah. train people and develop people. Um, so I'd say, honestly, skills can always be taught, but your kind of general approach and curiosity, that's like something that if you have that, that makes it a lot easier. And I'll, you know, that's the people that I've really hired have, have all pretty much had that. How do you measure that though? Um, obviously it, some people create just, content, yeah. post blogs, ETC. I guess it's just, um, Like there's a few different types of people. Some some people, some people like reading and and kind of uh, creating scenarios for themselves. Some people like doing CTFs. Uh, yeah. A lot of the people that do CTFs are just naturally super curious. And um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably say if I had the choice between someone who had a degree and who was like um, had some experience, or someone who did CTFs uh, yeah. and was like super curious. I'd, I'd go for the CTFs person. Okay. How about if, let's say you were still a penetration tester or yeah. if Pwn Labs was hiring a penetration tester for some reason, yeah. um, would you, what would you say to that person to, you know, to grow in their career? Do they have to learn to build maybe before they get better at breaking or what advice would you give considering you were a penetration tester? At yeah. Some point? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you don't have to build to do security. You don't have to be a sysadmin or, or, or a security uh, software engineer to start in security. If you just want to start in security, it's yep. totally doable. But is that kind of experience of building and maybe even like uh, defending blue team experience going to make your advice to your clients more valuable as a red team? Like mm -hmm. undoubtedly, right? So I, I would definitely say, um, in from, from my perspective, um, uh, being able to build, knowing how things are misconfigured, knowing how to remediate them uh, is definitely worth doing instead of just like hacking into stuff, which of course is fun. But like, I'd say, yeah, you'll be kind of like more valuable if, if you learn how to build and how to defend as well. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, well, at some point, obviously, you worked at Hack the Box, you built machines, you hired people, yeah. you were the head of innovation at the point that you left. Um, yeah. Would you mind discussing what ended up, you know, inspiring you to branch out and do your own thing? Yeah, yeah, no, ha happy to speak about that. So essentially I had a few, you know, I, I put together these decks and these docs about all these kind of ideas and having a look at the market about how we could kind of take hack the box to the next level and kind of the th things we could do. And I kind of realized that, you know, although hack the box is doing an amazing job and you saw recently with the kind of alchemy pro lab, they've, they've yeah, just yeah. landed, which is like an ICS uh, lab. Yep, yep. So, you know, they're still creating amazing things. Uh, but I just realized that for my aspirations in terms of what I wanted to do in the market, I probably needed to do that on 
you know, um, there probably needed to be a new, a new company <laughs> for that. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, that usually happens a lot when, you know, you have a, a bunch of talent and then uh, a lot of ideas don't really mix, but. Um, yeah. And, and sometimes like the ideas that you have might not make sense for, for an existing company. Right. And that's yeah. okay too. Yeah. That's definitely okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have a few questions left. Uh, what does the future look like for Pong Labs? What do you guys have in mind? Obviously, you just launched launched Thunderdome, the yeah. cyber range for you know multi cloud AWS, GCP, Azure, all that cool stuff. Yeah. Um, you plan on launching more of those over the uh, next few quarters. Um, what yeah. else does Pong Labs have in store? Definitely. So we've we've got quite a lot that I can kind of share. Um, We've got some free courses that are will be released um, um, in terms of Azure uh, attack and defense. We've got, um, you know, you mentioned cyber ranges, Thunderdome mm -hmm. being the first annual subscribers. Um, and, and this isn't a sales pitch, but it kind of it's going to sound like it. So I apologize. <laughs> but it's OK. Totally basic, cool. Basic, yeah. And annual subscribers get like access to two um, cyber ranges a year. So this year, you know, after Thunderdome, we're going to create another cyber range. Then each year after that, there'll be, you know, two exclusive cy um, cyber ranges yeah. um, for enterprise. Um, uh, for businesses, there'll be like uh, business exclusive ranges, uh, cyber ranges. Uh, mm -hmm. business exclusive uh, guided labs we're making really great progress on that and and also like on the enterprise offering um we have ctfs which we're launching this year we're like super excited about i mean i get i love guided labs and i love like sharing knowledge and you know if you want to take a ctf approach to a guided lab totally cool that's that's legit right but if you ask me what i get really excited about it's probably it's probably CTFs, and so uh, so for me, CTFs yeah. just wouldn't have the walkthrough. Exactly, they they wouldn't have the walkthrough. So they're kind of good if you've got like a foundation of knowledge already. Mm -hmm. Then it's it's great to kind of uh, try and use that and figure out the figure out the challenge. Guided Labs is like maybe you don't have some of the foundations, and 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 they will definitely help you with that. Um, okay. So, so what else? Um, you know, you we touched on enterprise do... CTFs. Yeah, yeah. Also, also maybe that, and also like we're always open to uh, collaborations with uh, with other people and, and companies and stuff like that. So I can't say too much about those discussions, but yeah, there's there's stuff stuff happening all the time. Okay, that's pretty cool. Well, Ian, um, last question. Outside of security, um, what else would you be interested in? Um, I usually, you know go to the gym i'm getting into shooting spend a lot of time at church what do you do nice man um yeah yeah i i need to go back to the gym i i did go for for a bit and i i kind of uh i kind of stopped for a while um and yeah interesting interesting hobbies there man i think for me um i've actually recently taken uh taken up baking <laughs> baking <laughs> yeah. that's interesting so i i actually like um I've made some like uh, you know chocolate cookies, or uh, I want to make some pecan pie, or you know apple pie, uh, bread, sourdough pizza, you know any any sort of baking, uh, sweet or savory. I'm I'm kind of getting into that at the moment. Uh, so this is why I need to go to the gym because obviously. Oh know, yeah, uh... yeah, yeah. <laughs> the calories in some need yeah, to do yeah, out, yeah. right? <laughs> That's pretty fun. But yeah, I recently started getting into shooting. Um, Mostly for defensive purposes yeah. is why I started. Yeah. But then um, I've realized it's a whole sport on its own and it's pretty cool. It's just very Definitely. expensive. Uh, so My, my yeah. grandparents used to do that in Sweden. Um, they used to do shooting uh, down the range. And they also did archery. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which um, I think. Uh, you go, have go, a place close to you? Oh yeah, I do. Um, there's a lot of ranges everywhere oh, in Texas, okay. but okay. I was going to say, I think I recently watched a documentary about how Sweden's probably the country with like the most guns per square meter or something. Like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's probably true because there's not like, um, uh, the population also is, is fairly, um, fairly small in, in yep. Sweden compared to, um, even Texas, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, 
Yeah. And it seems the culture is more around the sports side of things, right? Uh, in Sweden? Yeah, when it comes to like archery shooting. Uh, I think so. I mean, I'd, I'd love to say that I knew more about my kind of ancestry and where I'm from, but I'm still yeah. kind of, if I'm honest with you, I'm probably going to be on a journey to find out more about Sweden in the future. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right, well, um, that wraps up the formal part of things. Uh, if there's anything you'd like to say, either just as general inspiration to the people or, uh, you know, an elevator pitch for Pwn Labs, this would be the chance. And, you know, on that note, my my uh, my AirPods have actually died. <laughs> okay. <laughs>